I'm Tom Blanchard. Ah, the new area deputy. Pleased to meet you. News travels fast around here. I'm the only store for quite a few miles, so what news there is always winds up here. Well, I figured it might. That's kind of why I dropped in. I thought I'd drive up the coast and introduce myself. Well, I guess you notice there aren't many people around this time of year. Uh, just a few locals. But I, they must have told you that. They said there were a lot of empty summer homes. Excuse me.
let me do it, Daddy. Please, get in the car, Beth. There are a lot of people like Nicholas up here the year round. Keeps to himself, pays cash for everything. What about his children? Uh, they have quite a ways to go to school. Oh, Nicholas takes care of that right at home. I think he used to be some kind of professor. I don't know how many times I've told you you are never to do anything like that in public. Are you listening to me? Yes, Dad. If someone had seen what you did with that Frisbee, do you want them to come and take you away? No, Daddy, we'll be careful. I promise. You two know why I have to take care of you by myself. Because Mommy died. Because you're very special, Michael. Do you want strangers to find out about it? Do you want them to come and put you in a room with all sorts of machinery and stick needles in your heads? No. Then you can't use the power when anyone else can see. Not to play and not to open the car doors. Can you understand that? Well, here comes another local. Right on time, too. Hey, Bill, that new shipping come in yet? In the cooler. Yeah. Holy stand. You must be the new deputy. That's right, uh, Mr. Stanton. Uh, Tom Blanchard. Wally. Find a place to stay yet? Yeah, I did. Not much real estate action in the off season. Makes Wally reach for those little cans more often. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no respect for private property anymore. The trash that's around here now. Mr. Stanton, I'll do everything I can. Listen, I can take you and show you this beautiful home that I manage. Motorcycle scum came in and destroyed the place. How do you know who did it? <sighs> Bikers, hippies, surfers, they're all the same. They break into my rental properties, they live there for a while, trash the place and move on. Each time I got three, four hundred dollars worth of repairs. You gonna be able to handle that, deputy? You handle your listings. I'll handle the assholes. <laughs>
You look very nice, Beth. But we're supposed to think speak in the house. Check, but it's not mate. Yeah, there's an escape move, but you have to find it yourself. That's very good, Beth, but start moving the pieces with your hands so you don't forget when Miss Dennis arrives. There she is. Go get your schoolwork. That's not Miss Dennis. Sounds like her car. It's motorcycles. find out. Now, stay away from the window.
in there. Come back. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Woo! Come back. Yeah. I'm telling you, she's got flies hey, following that, her. Baby. I see flies Woo. coming down the freeway following her. Why is sucker what's waiting for? I'm waiting for all them crabs to drown, brother. <laughs> well, That's not going to happen. They can swim back. Hey, sucker hey, that for a while. Pretty hey, boy. Mostly when you put it through that. <laughs> Won't be long now. She's soaking. Whoa. Hey, Chief, how you doing? We didn't know anybody was home. Well, now you do. Hey, Snake. Ask him how come the water's so cold. <laughs> okay, you've had your fun. Now, why don't you just get dressed and leave? Say, dude, we just rode all the way down from Frisco and we're hot and dusty and Mickey there really needs a bath. I'm not going to ask again. Get off my property. He isn't very neighborly, is he? <laughs> I'm all cleaned up now, honey. Why don't you come on in? Chief, you can hurt somebody with that. <laughs> what do we do? I don't know. Michael, let's use the power. Daddy said never to ever again in front of people. Shouldn't have pulled that piece, Chief. <laughs> Snake, watch out! What are you hiding down there, Chief? Snake, you off them. You're crazy, man. It's a murder rap. I'm saying that shake and move your ass. I'm fucking out. Uh, uh, I guess he ain't dead yet. Finish him. Ed, you dig it. Snake. Uh, it's probably clogged jets. Most likely it's a fuel pump. Either way, we won't be taking any rust today. Something like this always happens when I'm in a hurry. I figured that when I saw you make that turn down below. You live in the canyon? I was visiting the Nicholas family. Well, if you like, I can drop you off. Uh, there's only one wrecker in the area, and he'll probably take a while to get here. Well, what about my car? I'll tag it. It'll be no problem. Is Daddy hurt? Oh, I hope I have the phone number with me. He's probably in the book. Not Professor Nicholas. I'm sure he's unlisted. I can get it for you. Oh, here it is. That car. I don't know where I'd be if you hadn't come by. I'm Nora Dennis. Tom. Tom Blanchard. Thank you, Tom. We're just a few miles from the station. I really appreciate this. I've never missed an appointment before with the Nicholas children. Was it important? In a way. I'm with the County Board of Education. Social worker? Well, not exactly. I guess you heard Mr. Nicholas teaches the children himself. 
I come out once a month to check on their learning progress. Do you know the family? Uh, no. Uh, I saw Nicholas. He seemed a bit aloof. I know. He's hardly said ten words to me in a year and a half. The children are quiet, too, but very gifted. But that's to be expected. What made you say that? Well, Nicholas and his wife are both prominent psychologists. She practiced in San Francisco, and he taught at Berkeley. What are they doing up here, then? Mrs. Nicholas died. Leukemia, I think, seven or eight years ago. That's when he quit the university and he came out here. Is he dead? Is he? Better take Daddy inside. said, the men in uniforms will come and take us away. Still no luck? No. I can't understand it. I'm less than an hour late. Well, maybe they're outside. I could run you up after I get back from this call. I'd hate to put you out. It's no trouble at all. Uh, why don't you make any calls you like and use my desk? Uh, garage number's right on the blotter. I keep saying this, but thanks again. Take this money. Get out of here now!
say what to do in that book? Oh look, those colors are real pretty. What will we do if those bad people come back? They won't. supposed to come up and see you today. Yes, ma'am. I've had some car trouble. So will you please tell your father that I'll I'll call him tomorrow as soon as my car is repaired. Okay. Okay, well thank you, Beth. Bye bye. figure out what to do if she wants to come up tomorrow. Can't we tell her about Daddy? Miss Dennis is nice. She won't hurt us. We can't tell anybody. We promised Daddy. That was about the thing speaking and the power. No, it's all the same thing. What do we do? It's about time. Where's your father? I need to talk to him. You hear what I said? Tell your father's friend Wally Stans here. He's not here. Don't give me that. This fancy car is squatting in the driveway. Wait a minute, mister. Please. Your father's avoided me about this lease long enough. Now, don't give me any of your back talk. Just get him. He's resting. I don't give... Listen, kid. It's important. I'm not sure I should wake him up. Look, you little brat, just do as I told you. Go and get him. Mr. Stanton, would you like some nuts? Get him! Stop it! Don't hurt my sister. I'll get my father. All right.
What are you staring at? I don't think Daddy's going to be in a good mood. <laughs> don't worry about that. I'll handle Daddy. Mr. Stanton, I think you'd better get out. did you make daddy into a weird thing? A zombie. To stop Mr. Stanton so he wouldn't hurt you anymore. He was bad. He drank too much and couldn't stop. But daddy killed him. No, he didn't. It was an accident. He got scared and his heart stopped. I just wanted him to go away and not bother us anymore. That's what. That motherfucker comes down here. This facility is closed overnight camping. You must be off this beach by 10 p.m.
Wow, there's a movie on Channel 6. I'm tired of TV. It's creepy here without Daddy. Daddy's here? No, he's not. Stop saying that. That man with the knife, he saw us. He wanted to come up here. They're bad people. They can come back to hurt us. They wouldn't come back. Even bad people don't come back. They? But they'll tell, and then when the men in uniforms come, they'll be mad because of what you did. I didn't do it by myself. It was your idea, and I'll tell. Beth? Uh-huh. Maybe we should send Daddy to look for the bad people. Just to scare them, so they won't tell. Sorry to leave you stranded. How's your car coming? Terrible. When they finally brought it in, they couldn't fix the fuel pump. They can't get a new one until tomorrow. You got somebody to pick you up? Mm, I tried to get a hold of a girlfriend, but she's not home. You hungry? I'm starving. There's a good place up the beach if you'd like to try it. Sure. On the way, I'd like to stop at my place and change. Uh... You could relax, freshen up. Deputy, take me into your custody. for dinner? Please. It'll just be a few minutes if you'll have a seat. Thank you. I want some more beer. No. Let's go to the store, huh? Ah, your truck is always hanging out for beer. We already lapped up enough for a football team. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, I ain't cheap. You just think you could be doing something else with that fat little mouth of yours. Uh-uh. Come on, baby, I got something for you. It's a little short and flabby, I know what it is. Shit. You must be thinking of snake. Not in the mood. Got sand in my drawers. So. Take them off. Not till we get some beer. What's that? Nothing, just a car. Probably some kids coming down to make out. Now, uh, they got the right idea. It looks like the car from this morning. Ah, uh, there are a million cars like that. I don't like it, let's leave. Stop freaking out over nothing. We're going nowhere. Care for a cocktail before dinner? Um, rum and coke, please. Okay. And you? Uh, club soda, lime, please. Okay. I thought you were off duty. Uh, off duty, but on call. Uh, doesn't your phone ever ring at 2 a.m.? My friends wouldn't dare. I'd kill them.
So, uh, how long have you been with the Board of Education? About six years. Really? Uh, how'd you get a job? Easy. After college, a teaching credential, good marks on the right test, and some very good friends. Do you like what you do? I love it. The kids are wonderful. But, but sometimes the parents can be a real pain. How's Nicholas? Oh, Nicholas never gives me any trouble at all. He's in another world. Rum and Coke? Thank you. You know, you're right about the salary. Uh, what else are you thinking about doing? What can a 27-year-old woman with a B.A. in English and a master's in education do? Well, quite a bit, I would think. It's not that easy. Don't laugh, but I thought about getting into police work. You want to work with children? Of course. Doing something I like is much more important than the money. You know, you sound like you've been hassled about this. Oh, you're very perceptive, deputy. <laughs> Enough about me. Have you solved any murders lately? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I write more speeding tickets than I solve murders. Excuse me, Tom? Yeah. You have a phone call. Thank you. Hey, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. What happened? They found two bodies on the beach, probably a drowning. Whoever called in was pretty hysterical. Well, should I come along? Why don't you stay here and finish your dinner? I'm not very hungry. I think I better find a motel. Look, stay at my place. I'll uh, drop you on the way. It's just awful. It's unnatural the way they are. They're all broken and nicks and all that. It's a mess. You should see it. What do you want? Well, we've been on. We've been on. I said, what anchovies. are you on? Anchovies. Well, anchovies. Oh, no. I'm not on anything. I haven't had anything but a dried up bologna sandwich all day. I'm, I'm, oh. Have a stand right well, there. Have a stand. Where... Stand right there. Don't move. You too. Yeah, but it's not that. We should go up north. I'm telling you, we should be in Morrow right now. We're not down here. <laughs>
Deputy Blanchard, is that you? Yes, ma'am. Would you come in here a minute, please? I have some additional evidence for you to examine. It is true what they say about cops. Every word of it. I'll tell you something else. Mm, what's that, deputy? Hmm? Always had a thing for women who drive Porsches. Oh? You like to uh, pull them over and ride them up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I became a cop. Mm -hmm. Why did you really? Hmm? Why did you really become a cop? Oh, my dad was a cop. I like it. It took me five years to get this assignment. Why? I'd like being my own boss. The only deputy for 50 miles. Breakfast time. Oh, all right. Give me a minute. Yeah, this is Blanchard. Well, can you give me 15 minutes? You got it. Look good in it. <laughs> Thank you. You get up this early every morning? When I have to. Oh, I'd forgotten. Those murders. If this biker couple had no ID, well, how are you going to be able to find out who they were? We'll trace the registration on the guy's bike. Uh-oh. Um. Is that coffee? Mm hmm Well, may I have some black, please? Thank you. How were they killed? They were suffocated. Someone held their faces in the sand. It's like they drowned in sand. How horrible. I saw a lot of bodies, but like some crazed, incredibly strong guy did it. Yeah, somebody on angel dust, maybe. Well, were there any witnesses? Uh, two fishermen saw a dark sedan drive away. 
If it was just some hotbed out for kicks, we'll probably never get him. That's not much to go on. Well, we'll see what the lab turns up. Uh, I'm sorry, but I gotta get down to the station. Uh, I checked about your car. It should be ready this afternoon. Oh, damn. I've gotta call Mr. Nicholas and tell him I'll be late. Hey, uh, why don't you use my car, okay? Oh, thank you. You're very nice. You know that? Yeah. Operator, can you check a number for me? 555-3268. Five, five, five,
Monica, why did you do that? They weren't nice boys. No, they weren't. But it was bad to let them see Daddy and follow the caca. Maybe we should tell Miss Dennis Daddy went on a trip. No, don't you want to know who's taking care of us? I guess you're right. Maybe we can tell her Daddy's sick and can't see anyone. I don't think she'll believe that. Well, maybe we can tell her Daddy's fixing something out back. That's a good idea, Michael. That's Miss Dennis. She's turning around. Don't worry. I like your essay quite a lot, Beth. It's very imaginative. Thank you, Miss Dennis. I wonder what could be keeping your father. Do you suppose something might have gone wrong with his car? Oh, no, Miss Dennis. Sometimes we have to take the whole water pump apart to fix it. How's your quilt coming along? It's neato. Do you want to see it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely, Beth. You're stitching so nice and even. Thank you, Miss Dennis. Beth was just showing me her quilt. Are you still working on your model train? Hmm. I got tired of it. County Sheriff, Deputy Blanchard. Yeah, hey, Deputy Blanchard, uh, this is Sergeant Reynolds of the Metropolitan Police. Yes, Sergeant. What can I do for you? Would you like me to check on him in person? Yeah, if you would, please. Um, the man's name is Guy Nicholas, and he lives at uh, 15318. Uh, Deer Creek Canyon. I know the location. Oh, did you get a call on it? No. Oh, that's, uh, that's too bad. Uh, I got a very expensive attorney here who's uh, threatening me with a heavy-duty writ. So I guess I'm going to have to spring this uh, dirt bag. But I will be here till 630. Well, look, uh, I see what I can do for you, okay? Okay, thanks. That's one that I owe you. Now, 
then we'll be on our way. I wonder what's keeping your father. I'm sure he's okay, Miss Dennis. He loses track of the time sometimes. Well, will you be sure and have him call me at that number I gave you? Now, you won't forget, will you? No, ma'am. Well, goodbye then. I'll see you next month. Goodbye, goodbye Miss Dennis. Dennis. Michael, we have to tell now. Miss Dennis will help us. No, I don't want to. I won't tell. And it's definitely off the hook. Thank you, operator. Hello. Hello. What's going on up the Nicholas place? What makes you ask a question like that? Well, he's got his phone off the hook. Really? The phone rang when I was up there. Operator just verified that it's off the hook now. Nicholas, uh, he seemed upset to you at all? I never saw him. He drove off when I got there, and he never came back. Isn't that a bit strange? For most people, it would be. But Nicholas is strange. Why are you so interested in the man? Well, the Metropolitan Police called me, and they picked up a guy carrying Nicholas's wallet, so it's either been lost or stolen. I'm going to take a run up there and check on it for him. Right now? After I take you to pick up your car. The kids, how they doing? I'm not sure. I had this feeling when I was up there that they were trying to tell me something, but they couldn't. Beth, the little girl, was friendly, as always, and Michael was moody. Oh, but that's not unusual. Hmm. We'll talk more on the way, okay? the view from the hill. But don't we need a, a box? When will we do it? We better start now. I think it takes a long time to dig that big a hole. What should I do? You get the shovels while I finish my yogurt. You got any whites, Billy? Come on, man. I mean, you were lucky to get out of there. I mean, we should be heading south. I mean, we'll pull up a TJ for a while. Something's going on, man. 
We snuffed that guy. The kids seen it, and the pigs don't know nothing about it. Yeah, but they're gonna know soon enough, and they're, and they're sure as shit gonna know who to look for. You should have ditched that wallet. I don't think those kids told the fucking pig. So we're going back. Well, for what? To make sure they never do. You have to go back to town tonight? Nora? Nora? I'm sorry, what did you say? Are you worried about the children? Yes, I am. I'm very worried. that call about the car in Stewart's pond? Yeah, just now. Well, we better get up there. I'll send the wrecker out and meet you there. All right, thanks. I think I'm going to go back up to the Nicholas house. Well, why don't you wait for me? Uh, we'll walk together. I think it'd be better if I went alone. The children might get anxious if they see a stranger in uniform. This should only take a half hour. I'd really prefer that you waited. Here, wait at my place. OK. one more time.
What's that? They're bad people. You said they wouldn't come back. What do we do? Michael! Let's hurry and finish. They don't know we're back here. Are you looking for someone? Maybe. Where's your old man? What old man? The dude that lives here. What's his name? Nicholas. I don't know. Where's those two kids at? I don't know where they are either. What do you want with them? Hey, that's our business, bitch. Billy, Billy, I'm talking to the lady. Look at that fancy car. Do you know where that is? Lily, I'm getting tired of your bullshit. Now, do you want me to let Billy ask you the questions? What? Up there. What's behind that hill? Nothing. Oh. Let's take a little ride in your car and find out. somebody in the car. I don't care. Miss Dennis wouldn't let anyone hurt us. Miss Dennis is my friend. I'm going to talk to her. <laughs> Miss Dennis, why did you bring him? He, he made me, Beth. But it'll be all right. Where's your father, Beth? Beth, where is your father? He's gone. Let them go and I'll do whatever you want. You can do whatever I want anyway. Hey, you think that's really flat to the old man? What's he mean? Where's your father gone? What Billy means is that he blew Nicholas away yesterday morning. And we was wondering why nobody called the cops. That's not possible. I saw him drive up here myself yesterday morning. I don't know what you're talking about. It ain't important now anyway. So we'll just finish our business and move on. Children. I'm not going to hurt them. Billy there is going to take them for a short walk. Go ahead, Billy. Well, Miss Dennis and I have a little talk. 
Beth! Michael! Beth! Michael! Run! Don't move. Run! I think we better have Daddy help us one more time. Your friend ran out of gas. Now you and me will finish our little ride. What the hell's going on? We're all right. He, he killed Nicholas. Don't let him get away. to us? Nothing. Nothing's gonna happen to you. You're safe now. What about Daddy? How can we bury him right? Of, of course we can. I just wish I could... I, I could understand how all this happened.
I still don't understand it. How did you get this ability, this power? Daddy told us what to do. But how? He said Mommy had the power. She died and he taught us how to use it. Are you saying that your mother could do this sort of thing too? You said the big guy in the suit killed that biker? Yeah. Did you see it? No, why? Well, uh, I hate to blow your case out of the water, but the big guy's been dead at least 24 hours. Let's hit it. Miss Dennis. You're welcome. Miss Dennis? Yes, Beth? When will the men in uniforms come and take us away? Who told you that? Dad said it would happen if we told anybody that they'd put us in white rooms, do tests, and even stick needles in our heads. Oh, Beth, no! Can you both talk that way? Uh-huh. It's easy. What did you say to her? I told her we don't have to be afraid of the grown-ups anymore. They can't make us do anything we don't want to. How you guys doing? Fine. Did you get enough to eat? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good. We're going to have to go pretty soon. Where? Just in the town. Um, you're not thinking of confining these children, are you? Well, they have no guardian. Besides, there's some questions I have to ask. Something just doesn't add up about this. Are you going to take us into town? You don't have to worry, pretty girl. We'll find some nice people to look after you and Michael.
everyone has a love that's hard to forget. But for Louise Elmore, it's impossible. He disappeared the day we were to be married. He left you on your wedding day? I didn't say that. Disappeared, there is a difference. How long has it been since all this happened? Nineteen years. Because she is trapped in the horror of her father's twisted mind. I have never heard you say a kind word to me. I've never even seen you smile. And what once was love. Your name is Robert. It's 1960. And we're in love. Has become torment. performance since Diary of a Mad Housewife is a woman caught in the grip of a psychotic nightmare. And the secrets that haunt her are hidden away someplace she must not go. A place where fantasies die and terror is born. When you walk the 13 steps to the attic, you open the door to a deadly nightmare. Unthinkable terror waiting in the attic. mysterious house, tortured by a malevolent force, destined to discover the hidden room in the realm of the Grim Reaper. One by one, he tracks them down. One by one, they disappear. One by one, they come face to face with the ultimate terror. He's coming for you. The Grim Reaper. Somewhere there's a raving lunatic. I know, but where and who is it? A series of brutal murders and three unique suspects. The young hustler. How long have you hated enough to kill? The deranged court clerk. I blame the women. Walking about the streets half naked. They ask for it. And the respected judge. The suspenseful thriller, night after night after night. But the killer, a maniac. Is it possible he didn't leave a clue? He left a very special one. 
Photos of the naked woman embracing her lover. He has some purpose. Plan. I know it. Do you think that he'll kill again? I think so. He only attacks beautiful married women. He only attacks them when they've been unfaithful to their husbands. And then his attacks mean terror of the most frightening kind. I'm the Avenger, the one you insist upon calling a maniac. I'm going to kill your wife this very day. <laughs> Farley Granger is the policeman who tracks down the slasher.